Leaders Gallery, and we're here together with a partner, Julia Jorn, who's going to tell us a little bit about the gallery and the vision of the gallery. David founded his gallery in the Soho neighborhood of Manhattan, which is a little south of here. We're right now in yeah. Chelsea. Uh, it was about 1993, and it was a small gallery where he started showing work of artists from Europe and actually uh, the West Coast. Uh, in 2002, he moved to Chelsea. He was actually one of the last galleries to migrate from Soho, which was really the heart of the, art, the contemporary art world then. To Chelsea and he was able to find a space where we are here on West 19th Street that started um, maybe it was a couple thousand square feet and then over the years he was able to acquire spaces to the east and to the west. Tell me a little bit about the spaces that you have here. You are more than in one place. Eh? We are. In Chelsea we're here in what we like to call the garage space mm -hmm. and this is a space that is a little bit more raw and feels a little bit more industrial yeah. Yeah. and it's something we change it all the time. We build these walls, we put them up, we take them down. Constantly changing the space, we're constantly changing the configuration. Yeah. Essentially it's an open space and then we're able to change it through walls, through lighting, sometimes with this oh, yeah. beautiful natural light now, but sometimes we cover it yeah. to have video installations here. Um, but it ranges from everything from sculpture to works on paper. We represent artists who are in the minimalist camp and, and also figurative painters. So all the spaces have to work for all of the artists. Okay. This so what do we see here? What is... So this is a new exhibition, a new body of work by um, what's now we are understanding is considered the most popular artist in the world. Right. Name is uh, Ms. Kusama. She lives in Japan. And based on the museum attendance from last year and all of the shows that she has currently traveling around yeah. the world, uh, she had the most uh, museum attendance in the world. So oh, she's fantastic. considered the most popular. So we're very honored to have her yeah. exhibition here. It's our second with her. Yeah. And this exhibition comprises three things. There's a new body of work, which are these stainless steel pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And the next space, which we'll go to, it's um, the US debut of what's called the Obliteration Room. Guests are invited to come into the space and take these stickers and put them throughout the space. So when people are walking into the house, we have about 20 visitors at a time. Uh, they can come into this space and take this uh, sheet of stickers and start sticking away. Yeah. So it started as completely white, completely empty of color, I guess white's a color. Okay, so from the obliteration room, let's walk into the other part of the exhibition, which is right next door, which are the new paintings that Kusama's made. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the vision of the gallery, how it comes alive in the spaces here? I think the vision of the gallery is a combination of three things. It's the incredible, beautiful spaces that have been designed with the artists in mind. Obviously, the artists are the primary vision of the gallery and the range of the artists that we represent and the estate which now totals close to 50 mm -hmm. is everything from American minimalist masters to figurative painters and a lot of things in between video artists, mm -hmm. artists that work in photography, yeah. collage, works on paper and then the third thing is the staff and how the staff works with those artists. So collectively, the staff is able to really support the artist's journey through their own careers and especially maintain and look after the artist's legacies. Yes, yeah, so you got a really fantastic range of artists. How do you find new artists? Well, that's a really good question. It's a question we get asked all the time. Uh, through the history of the gallery, artists have come to the gallery in different ways, at different times of their careers for different reasons. We're very fortunate right now in that we are in a position to represent some of the I would consider the great giants of contemporary art, like Richard Serra, Kusama, Donald Judd, Dan Flavin. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, at the beginning, of course, when David was starting his gallery and growing the gallery, he was using really his taste and his instinct for what it is that he liked and what it, what it was that he wanted to represent. But every artist has a story and every journey has a story. Uh, so there's no one answer to that question. <laughs> How has the art market changed over the last couple of years? Well, the art market's definitely changed in that it's become more global. Uh, yeah. In the 10 years that I've been with the gallery, I would say that, you know, 10 years ago, the sort of the centers of the art world were yeah. certainly New York yeah. and London. 
And collectors are now, they're all over the world. There's a kind of, there's a lot of activity happening right now in Hong Kong, for mm -hmm. example. But the global market has changed in the fact that there's collectors all over the world. I think last year we did something like 15 or 17 art fairs on different continents and different mm -hmm. cities. So we're reaching collectors everywhere from Europe to South America, Mexico, Asia, obviously in New York, um, but we are constantly traveling to meet those those clients and those collectors and understand their culture and understand what kind of artists that they're interested in. What is your relationship on, with the collectors and the artists? Well, what I love about being at the gallery is having a really long-term relationship with the artists. In terms of the collectors, the, um, my colleagues work very closely with a number of collectors for many, many years. We like to work with collectors who collect in depth and have been committed to the gallery program for, for many years. Of course, we always op have open doors to new collectors, mm -hmm. and in the sense that the, the art world's gotten so much more global, mm -hmm. we're constantly meeting collectors from all around the world, whether we're meeting them through art fairs that we do in particular regions, or participating in museum shows that you know, bring us and our artists around the world. So David Swinner is one of the top galleries in the world, I would say. Uh, that you work for many years and you have a really clear vision of what you're doing. So uh, where will you go from now? Well, I think um, we have been experienced tremendous growth over the last decade, certainly. We've built buildings. We have our space in Chelsea. We have a second space in Chelsea. We opened a gallery in London mm -hmm. in 2012. So we've created those physical spaces. We're growing in the sense that we have invited more artists and estates to join the gallery. We're growing in staff. We're over, I think, 120 people who work collectively between New York and London. So our sole goal is to really support mm -hmm. our artists. Uh, and then we're growing in the sense that we're building a publishing house. We started it a year ago. It's called David's Warner Books, and it's a standalone business, standalone publishing house. We've been working with the artists since the beginning on publishing, and it's something David's very committed to. And artists love working on books. That will never change. No. So that's a big initiative that we're taking, and it's somewhere we want to go. We're also really looking into the digital world and what that means and how, that, how we interact with that over the next decade, actually looking into the future. So how do you help the artist to communicate? Well, first there's the exhibition in and of itself and all the activity that goes around the exhibition. So in many cases it's producing a catalog. So it's working very closely with them on their images, their mm -hmm. photography, writers, authors that want to talk about the work. Mm -hmm. And then the way to communicate the work out into the world. There's, you know, the world we're in right now is fully digital. So the way that people get their information is, you know, so much of it's on the internet and so mm -hmm. much of it's on the web. So the pace of the communication has changed and that it's become much faster. So mm -hmm. our job is to really be the filter and the advisor and the conduit for which they choose or we help them make decisions about how it is that they want to have their work out there in the world. Can you tell me a little about, about the fundraising you did? Sort of our biggest fundraiser was a few years ago called Artist for Haiti, where we actually started a not-for-profit organization called Artist for Haiti with the actor Ben Stiller, who spent a lot of time working in Haiti. And he knew the gallery and knew David Warner, so asked him to partner with him to create an auction where about 26 or 27 contemporary artists gave really major works that were sold at Christie's auction house. And Christie's waived all its fees, so 100% of the proceeds went to NGOs on the ground working in Haiti. So Julia, if you were to give a young person that wants to work in the art world an advice, what would that be? My advice would be to see everything, look at everything, learn as much as you possibly can. There's so many galleries, they're all open and free to the public. There's so many opportunities to look at art. There's so many opportunities to read about art. There's museums all over New York, all over the world.